What is up, my Conquerors for Christ? It's your girl Chrissy the Conqueror. One more time doing it again. And this time with this video, I want to talk to you about faith. Now, many people talk about faith. We know the general idea about faith. Faith being the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. All of those beautiful stuff, the Bible said it. But today, I just want to talk to you a little more in my definition about what exactly faith is. So I did a little research and what I came to the conclusion of is that faith is confidence or unquestionable belief in, in the truth. It's the value or trustworthiness in something or someone, especially without proof. And this is whether it's based on reason or no reason. So basically faith is an unquestionable belief in something or someone without reason so you don't need a reason to believe in this it's, i just have a strong urge to believe this it I, I don't care what the evidence is or not existing i believe this this is so and i put my heart into it my mind into it this is what it is and that is basically the general idea of faith now, biblically speaking, though, in Hebrews 11, and I made reference to it just now, faith is a substance or the significance or magnitude of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So that is basically what faith is. So through faith, we understand that the word, the world was formed by the word of God, and so that things which are seen are not made of things which appear the way they seem might be a little confusing but we'll get closer to that as we go by so that is basically one of the ways we can define faith so faith is the substance of things not seen i don't see what i believe in but i have other reasons to believe that this thing is real and i believe it i don't care what anybody else wants to think this is what I believe and this is what I'm going to work with. So, going a little bit deeper now. There are different types of faith. And as I mentioned earlier, these are without reason. You don't need to believe. You don't need any reason. And man is designed to come up with reasons to explain things that they wouldn't otherwise explain or could be able to explain. So that is how man comes up with different theories, suggestions as to why things are the way they are in order to make a, something, some sense out of a thing or a theory or something that they have discovered and they can't explain. Now, faith eliminates all of this and says, look, this is what is. You don't need to, to go around and, and try to find theories as to why this is. All you need to know is that this is and that's that. So it, it's kind of selfish when you look at it. It might look at it selfish, but technically it's not the case when it comes on to God. So there are different types of faith. And the first one we're going to look at is temporary faith. Now, temporary faith, and if you look into St. Luke 8, 13, you will see an example of temporary faith. And I made a quote of it. They on the rock are they which when they hear receive the word with joy and these have no root for a while believe and in time of temptation fall away so that is an example of temporary faith temporary faith basically is believing in something because of what you're hearing at the moment so it's a spur of the moment thing. You get all psyched up because you're listening to a sermon and the sermon is so sweet. It's so powerful. It's so fun. I, you like the way it sounds. It was 
oh, it was a great sermon, and you feel so motivated and so encouraged, and oh my God, this was the best sermon ever I ever heard, and your faith is way up there, and you feel like you can conquer the world, and then after all is said and done, and temptation comes your way, all of that faith and all of that excitement and all of that sickness goes down the drain and you begin to fear, you begin to worry, you begin to doubt, you begin to wonder, oh dear Lord Jesus, how am I going, how am I going to make it? Lord God, I don't know what to do. Oh, and you start to do all manner of crazy things. You almost forgot you, you, you were in church two weeks ago and the preacher was preaching and oh, that preaching was awesome. Oh, you forget all that. That's temporary faith so that's one of the, the types of faith that the bible mentions the second one is great faith and this is oh this is the opposite of it but you got to be careful with this one too this is magn this is a, this is a magnitude of faith that you will not understand until you are somewhat in a very mature or semi mature relationship with god spiritually but i'm going to break it down to you as much as possible so great faith, and I took this scripture from St. Matthew 8, um, chapter 8 to 10, and it speaks of the centurion Roman officer who wanted the Lord Jesus Christ when passing through to heal one of his, his soldiers who was sick. So the scripture says, the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, Go, and he goeth. And to the other, Come, and he cometh. And to my servant, Do this, and he doeth it. And when Jesus heard it, he marveled, and said unto them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great a faith, not in Israel. So that is great faith. Great faith is the ability to say, I believe in you, Lord Jesus, so much. I know who you are so much. I know what you can do. And I trust in you and in your word and in your principles. To the extent that anything I ask of you, it will be granted without hesitation. You don't even have to be here. And that manifests in your life and it manifests in your spirits in such a way that you can pray for anybody anywhere in the world. And with that great faith, you believe that whatsoever you are praying about, it will come to pass and that person will be delivered. And with the magnitude of faith, that, it, that which is great faith, it might just happen immediately. That's, that, that takes practice, though. Great faith does not come overnight. It's something that you have to work on. You have to have a sense of relationship with God. You have to harvest that relationship every day through prayer and occasional fastings. But the Word has to be embedded in you every day. It has, you have to pray every day, communicate with God, structure your prayers. And, and um, I'm going to do another video sometime in the future about prayer and how you structure your prayers. But for now, great faith, that's something that you're going to have to work on. And some exemplary people are in the Bible that talk about great faith and exhibit great faith. And people such as Noah and Job and Moses, oh my God, and David, Solomon. Those are some people, Elijah, oh my God, one of my favorite prophets of all time, Elijah, man of faith. Oh God, Isaiah, man of faith, again, great faith came out of those people. And it did not come overnight. They went through trials, they went through stages of mature, maturing spiritually and understanding God and knowing who God is and what he's able to do. So great faith is another example or not one other type of faith. And the last one I'm going to touch on tonight is mental faith. Now this one is kind of technical, but mental faith basically is thinking whatsoever you think it that was going to happen that's mental faith and the bible speaks about mental faith as well let me get my book it fell oh my god so yeah mental faith let's get back to that 
I'm where I'm reading from a book. I did my notes and I put them in a book. In the book, that embarrassed me. So, all right, let me get my book right. Good. Back online. So, mental faith, and I took the chapter, the scripture from James two, fifteen to seventeen. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute, meaning extremely poor, for daily food, and one of you say unto them. Depart in peace, be ye warm and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not those with things which they are in need of to the body, what doeth it profit? Neither even so faith, if it had no works, is dead being alone. So mental faith basically is perceiving faith in your mind. Oh, I wish you the best. I know that you'll be able to prosper. I know that you'll get through your situation. I know that this is just for a time. You might be struggling now, but you will struggle. You will be victorious in the future. And yet you're doing nothing towards assisting the person involved in order to get them out of the situation. And the worst part of that is you actually can help. Some people are in the situation where they are the position where they are able to help you at the time of your struggle, but they choose not to. And instead they come and tell you stuff like, oh, I know you are going through some stuff. I understand what you're going through. I was there at one point. Oh my God, it was awful. And they're not helping you. They're doing nothing. And um, the Bible talks about it. The Bible says that's just mental faith. You're just saying stuff as if, Saying it is going to help. It, it's not. So don't do it. Stop it. It's not going to help. So that is mental health. Mental faith, sorry. So that is one of one another type of faith. And um, uh, there is others, but I just wanted to share that with you for tonight. So I hope somebody got understanding from this. And if you have any more, anything else that you want me to to speak about leave it in the comment section below like and subscribe and um whatever other content you want to hear i will definitely put it out for you but i just wanted to to put this across for you tonight let you have an, something different i'm trying something new i hope that it works and for my subscribers who were dedicated in listening to motivational talks from a uh, prominent uh, preacher that i put up a couple months ago yeah, um, because of some problems I'm having, I took it down. I took those videos down. And I'm not going to, I didn't even know about them until they started happening that they could happen that way. So I put, I took them down. So I'm sorry for all my subscribers who subscribe just to see those videos. I, I will not be able to put them up anymore. So I'm hoping that you'll still stick around for other content and listen to other of my content because I'm here to motivate people through the word of god try to touch you try to help you see if you can develop and mature in the word of god so that this is my video for tonight i hope you had something i hope you got something out of this video and look forward to other videos coming your way for right now chrissy the conqueror signing out